Hi Aquarius, I have a message for you. My name is Amber from Mystic Eyes The Journey and I am here with a collective message for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and really anybody that wants to connect with Aquarian energy tonight. Um, I hope that this reading finds you in peace, finds you in love, in your divine purpose, maybe with your divine counterpart. And let's just get right into it. If these readings resonate with you, please consider liking, subscribing, um, leave me a comment. All of these are ways that you can help support me on my journey as I help and support you on yours. And we'll get right into it. So Spirit, what does Aquarius need to know? Working with the Golden Wheel Tarot today. And I'm going to be clarifying with the Deep, Dark, and Dangerous Oracle by Stacey DeMarco and finish up with some tea leaves at the end. All right, let's get one more card. Now, the back of the deck, we have the Judgment card. Let's see if I can highlight that for you. All right, so this is a call to action. Uh, so... We're starting with the Hermit card, the Temperance, and the Knight of Cups. Wow, this is this is big energy. I love this for you, Aquarius. So the Hermit, um, I'm feeling that most of you are either currently in the Hermit energy or have just recently come out of it. Now, the Hermit energy for me is about going inward to retrieve some sort of wisdom or information that be, can be used on your path ahead, but also to be shared with others to illuminate their path. So when I think of Hermit, I always think of a lighthouse, right? Not necessarily um, Hierophant energy where you're teaching other people. You're just kind of exuding a light that allows others to see their path ahead, whether they choose to follow your path, another path, whether they just want to crash into the rocks, that's totally up to them, right? It's about just taking that light for yourself and that knowledge, that wisdom that you gain from self-exploration illuminates everything around you. All right, so then we have temperance energy. And when I think about the temperance card, and it's funny, these two energies feel so similar, right? This kind of cloaked energy that both of these men in these cards possess, right? So I almost feel like the temperance energy is the hermit, that from going, from the process of going within and retrieving wisdom, you're able to then temper that energy, right? He's holding this red vase, which kind of represents, for me, temperance because it's Sagittarian energy. This is passion. This can even be anger, right? That fiery energy that's tempered through emotional processing, water energy, in order to create an alchemical process to create gold, to create something that's tangible and physical that can manifest into some sort of material abundance. So it's like we're taking this wisdom from hermit mode, we're tempering it and emotionally processing it in a way that it becomes material and tangible. Now we have the Knight of Cups here. So I feel like for a lot of you Aquarius, you're either going to have somebody coming towards you with some sort of gift, right? Some sort of offer of new love, right? I think the Ace of Cups, this knight is holding the Ace of Cups, a new beginning in love. You either receiving this offer or giving this offer to somebody, right? And with this judgment card, this is in divine alignment to your life's purpose, this is sort of reawakening some sort of mission, some sort of path forward through the offering, through this emotional offering. So this is interesting. I want to clarify some of this. So Spirit, can we clarify the hermit energy? And like I said, I feel like a lot of you are either currently in the hermit energy knowing that you're close to that period where you're ready to step out. For some of you, I feel like you have stepped out of the hermit energy, that this is recent past. Now we're going through this alchemical process, turning this wisdom into something physical that we can then offer to others. Yep, seven of pentacles. 
right? It's about planting seeds. I'm telling you, whatever this is, whatever you've been cultivating within the hermit mode, it was creating a fertile soil so that you could grow something physical. So I think a lot of you, believe it or not, I, I do feel like a lot of people that would be attracted to my work, um, they are in the spiritual field to some degree. I've been learning through my own path that everything can be spiritual <laughs> no matter what it is you can figure out a way to make it into something that serves the collective in a spiritual way so i feel like this is what this is having to go and do some sort of internal healing that is going to help you ascend to the next level and you're going to be able to make money off of this aquarius We're clarifying temperance here. I still got judgment at the back. <laughs> King of Wands. This is leadership. And Seven of Swords. Interesting. King of Wands with the Seven of Swords. Hmm. Leadership and strategy. So this particular Seven of Swords, I want you to see that. It's like this person is being kind of hunted he has these swords right that represents knowledge of some kind some sort of sacred communication that this person possesses but feels like they need to hide it now i feel like that may be connected to hermit energy that there is some layer or energy of secrecy around whatever this is that you're creating Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Let's clarify this Knight of Cups. I feel like that one's to come out. Ace of Wands, new inspiration. And it's funny that I saw the Ace of Cups with this Knight of Cups. So this is a very fertile period for you. Again, I kind of got that energy that the Hermit was creating fertile soil. Creating fertile soil in order for you to plant seeds. But there's a level of secrecy while this is growing that spirit wants you to maintain. Not in a sneaky way, although, you know, withholding information, I guess, would be sneaky. Um, but it's more strategic. They're saying, I'm hearing that there's, it's going to be more impactful if you release it at its culmination. Oh my gosh, and look at this. As I said, culmination, we have the 10 of pentacles. <laughs> this is gonna be big, Aquarius. This is gonna be so big. Wow. So whatever you're creating, this is going to be big and spirit is asking you to kind of cloak this, right? We were getting this energy of cloaking. To cloak this until it has reached its culmination and then release it. Being strategic, being a little bit sneaky, not for the sake of being sneaky or underhanded, but because it's going to have that much of an impact when it's released in its full expression. And that's what we're getting with the judgment card in the traditional tarot, um, right or wait tarot, right? It's about waking up, right? We see the bodies rising out of their coffins when it's released at its culmination, that's what's going to wake people up. And that's why it was connected to the hermit. You had to go inward to find some sort of sacred knowledge that helped to wake you up. Now, I feel like I really want to make this abundantly clear that there are ways to walk a spiritual path doing work and being of service to the collective in a way that is not stereotypically spiritual, right? You don't need to be a tarot reader to do spiritual work. So for example, I have a client that is stepping onto her life's purpose, onto her path as a realtor. So this may be a confirmation, but I'm just, I'm just trying to give you um, an example of how something mundane is actually spiritual work. Because when we connect people, and anybody who's ever lived in a house that carried not great energy, you know what I'm talking about. 
aligning people to their homes, to a home that is going to bring about the best energy possible for them is sacred work. Guiding people through an incredibly stressful process such as buying a home is sacred work. Okay, it's a big deal. Even though it doesn't see, it seems mundane. It seems like it's of the physical world and it is of the physical world, but the home is spiritual. It's like the temple, aligning people with their temple. And I feel like I just needed to say that because I feel like some of you are spiritual people that are walking down a particular path and maybe there's doubts like am I really on my life's purpose am I on my path because this isn't a traditional spiritual path but spirit wants to make it clear and abundantly clear that it is a spiritual path and you are being led by spirit all right so for the sake of duality I'm going to go into the deep dark and dangerous oracle I really love this deck, mostly because five years ago, I would have never read from a deck like that. I've been like, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> but I'm realizing how fruitful darkness is, right? It's this, it's the void space that allows us to create absolutely anything we want to. And I'm getting a lot of red energy. Right? Root chakra. Again, that's that stability energy bringing me back to the home. I feel like somebody watching this is, is looking to get into realty or something to do with the home, maybe cleansing homes or something like that. Okay. Let's just get one for Aquarius. One for Aquarius, please, Spirit. Hello. Anybody there? <laughs> Nothing wants to come out of here. I'm going to go through one more time and then I'm just going to honor that. Okay. Valkyrie. We got choice. And at the back of the deck, we have mermaid beauty. So for some of you, this is going to be work that surrounds beauty. It's interesting. We have the mermaid. I always think of Aquarius when I think of mermaids. Okay. What do we got? Valkyrie choice agency. I'm thinking agency, which has been a concept that I've been, has been coming up a lot for me. This idea that there's always a choice somewhere. Sometimes we really have to dig for that choice, but spirit, God always gives us a choice no matter what's going on outside of us. All right, so we got 42, that comes to six. That's reciprocity. Receiving what it is that we put out. All right, what do we got? Valkyrie, you have control over yourself only and you can choose your thoughts and actions. It is never too late to change. You can transform your fears. Be courageous even though you may be fearful. The duality here is choice versus con consequences self in relation to the community wow mm. getting as above so below as within so without micro macro energy mm. okay this is bringing me back to the hermit right going inside of ourselves to do inner work is creating that light that illuminates everything outside of yourself, right? The hermit energy is interesting. Depending on who is observing that energy, it can either be incredibly <laughs> comforting to go within yourself, but for some people, that's a terrifying thought. They're so consumed with the things outside of themselves that the idea of going within is a disturbing process. And I feel like you went, part of the reason that you went through your inner work, through that hermit energy, was so that you could be made an example of what can happen. And that's why spirit wants you to cloak whatever it is that you're creating, because it's going to have that much more of an impact when it is released. 
right? I'm getting this energy of you withdrawing from everybody around you, taking a year, two years to fully focus on yourself and create whatever it is that you're creating. And when you release it, it's huge. And people are going to learn from that. They're going to see you do that and be like, whoa, is that what happens when you, when you go into hermit mode? Is that what happens when you stop partying every night and spend time on your own? Is that what happens when you start stop entertaining negative things outside of yourself and solely focus on you? Spirit is using you as an example. And what an honor. I'm going to read really quickly from The Mermaid. This is four, 14, relates to five. Five is change. So let's see. What's the duality here? Beauty is, is a high value when it illuminates and inspires, illuminates and inspires, but it is in the eye of the beholder. Relying just on outward appearances is shallow and temporary. If beauty is the only virtue, then others need to be developed. Love your own unique beauty. If you are using your beauty to manipulate someone, be wary. This particular kind of magic wears thin after a time. The duality here is attraction and danger. Interesting. Attraction and danger. I feel like for a lot of you, I'm being pulled into the divine feminine energy. I'm getting empress energy from this. Right again, again, I'm being pulled back to this hermit energy. Because the hermit is the Virgo energy and Virgo energy is feminine. And I'm not talking about gender here. I'm talking about energy, right? Masculine energy, when it's in the process of manifestation, it moves outside of itself. Again, this so within, so without, right? What's going on inside of us ourselves is going on outside of ourselves. And it's about balancing this masculine and feminine energy. I feel like previously you may have exerted yourself in order to get what it is that you wanted, working hard working diligently, making connections, communicating with other people in order to find the right paths. I feel like you're being asked through this hermit process to learn how to connect with the feminine energy by allowing yourself to simply attract the things that are meant for you, right? Because with the empress energy, feminine energy, it doesn't need to do anything. It's so rooted and connected to its sense of self. And through that self-love, learning to love the self, you become an energetic match of abundance of all kinds, an abundance of love, an abundance of material, right? Because Empress, again, is that Venetian energy, 7,000th second house, True love, well, not true love, that's fifth house, uh, partnership and self-worth. And I feel like as you really start to anchor into self and draw your energy inward instead of pressing it outward, you start to become extremely attractive. And I don't just mean beauty, although I do mean beauty. This is people wanting to work with you. This is people wanting to be around you, right? But keep in mind, because we are talking about duality, right? It's attraction and danger. When we shine a bright light, right? If we turn out the lights and we're in darkness, right? Hermit energy and omit a bright light. It attracts everything. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, so being able to activate the sense of choice, agency, right? She's holding the sword. This is giving me queen of swords energy. Being able to cut out the things that no longer serve and do it purely from a state of intellect. Oh, you got bad vibes? Cut. You know, it's not emotionally personal. It's business, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. It's, it's just business, baby. Right, understanding that you are stepping into this energy of beauty and that is wonderful. However, be aware that when you're in that hyper feminine energy, that super attractive energy, right? You can be male and be within your feminine energy. 
you attract everything. <laughs> so you'll need to sort between opportunities, sort between people, sort between suitors, right? Place it as it resonates. All right, <laughs> let's wrap it up with some tea leaf. How are we doing on time? 22007. All right. Love these. Ooh. All right. Wow. Beautiful. So we got love at the back. All right. So a lot of you are attracting love in all forms. This is an abundance of love. So this is self-love. This is partnership love. This is romantic love, friendship, colleagues, opportunities, love from the universe. This is a favored energy that you're stepping into Aquarius, or you may already be in it. Just place it as it resonates. The throne a position of authority. Okay, there's a lot of power coming to you. And remember, with great power comes great responsibility. The lion, time to act. I'm getting Leo energy here as well. Leo, inspired through the heart space. This is energy, fifth house, true love, uh, children, childlike, inner child energy, beautiful, beautiful energy. However, don't mess with the lion, y'all. Right? Spirit is asking you to create that balance. That sweet, fun-loving, quirky, beautiful Aquarian energy. But also be aware, right? When you're in this energy, it's beautiful, but you attract everything. Okay, a younger woman. Dealings or relationships with a younger woman. All right, so be on the look of that. Look out for that. There is going to be someone who quite possibly would be younger than you. Although kind of look at the, <laughs> the temperament or the affect of this person. A little, a little serious, <laughs> a little serious. So maybe be wary. And as I say that someone is behaving stupidly, the turkey. Okay. So we may be talking about a younger woman, literally somebody who's younger than you, or we're talking about someone who is immature. Right, so be aware of that. Even though we're in this really positive energy, be aware. And that's why spirit is um, gave us that seven of swords and those cloaking energies. Whatever it is that you're working on needs to be protected because there are energies around you that could potentially work against that energy. Okay? So I think, I think we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much, Aquarius. If this resonates with you, please give me a like. Give me a comment. Don't let me know what's going on because that's a secret, right? But let me know where you're from, what's going on outside of whatever it is that you're creating. Subscribe to the channel. Um, I really appreciate it. And until we meet again, namaste.